friends as our India has become fifth largest economy in the world. It has become pertinent and very important to secure our borders, to secure our nation's people, the industry, the whole economy. And protecting a nation takes a lot of efforts. It is man behind the machine, but first the machine comes. And when you talk about machines, it requires a lot of research and development. And here comes the scientists. DRDO is the premier agency in India that develops such critical security infrastructural systems that makes our country secure because our forces, now they are self-reliant. Earlier we have been procuring many systems from outside the country, but today we are producing here. The defense manufacturing ecosystem has really grown up. And this is all because of efforts of our scientists. Scientists like Dr. Kalam, scientists like Dr. B.K. Das, who is uh, DG ECS. ECS. Welcome, sir. Thank you so much. It's such a great privilege and honor to have you on National Defense, sir. Please tell us about the work which DRDO is doing, the work which ECS particularly is doing to securing, in securing our nations, uh, our borders. Thank you so much. At the outset, I would like to thank God that I got a chance to work in DRDO. It's an organization which encourages research. It's an organization which makes you believe what you can do. There was a time where every single thing we were trying to depend on our foreign counterparts. When we launched missiles, when we launched big things, we understood what restriction is. We understood what, what our autonomy is all about. We understood what technology independence is all about. And I think that's the time we started thinking how to make our country free from import. And now, off, off late, with the recent years, with the challenge of Atmanir Bharat, we all have been geared up that how best and how fast and how economically we can create systems which are going to be our signature in the world market today. In these connections, in this Aero India, we have come forward with a plethora of technologies. And the concept which goes on, the culture which goes on today is that the systems will be built up by our industries. DRDO is going to think not only the current technology, the next generation technology. Friends, we are in a race. It is not a war, it is a war of technology. Whoever reaches first is the winner. Today, in this technology world, if we start developing only the systems, then the technology goes behind. So we develop technology enabling the industries to realize the master systems on the production worthy, so that it generates more of employment, it creates more of economy, it makes India's economy power and a technology superpower. In that context, in this Aero India, when we talk about fighters, when we talk about our systems, all along, if you look at back up to the history, all our fighters are depending on radars, the EW systems, the electro-optic systems, infrared search and track systems, missile approach warning system, and communication SDRs. All of them are coming as an import. And today, when we talk about today's system, piece by piece we have taken these technologies ahead. Like I told you, if we copy, if we duplicate the system which we are getting, we will be nowhere in this race today. If we want to win the race, it has to generate from here. And that's the reason all the scientists are committed to think what could be the physics behind it, and it is only the physics which is going to win the war. And with all that, all that thinking together, the physics we have taken it to our control. The technology we have taken it to our control. And with all those technologies on the drawing board, thanks to our professors, academic institutions, our students, all are put together, the brains, that how India is going to be technology superpower. We have drawn on the drawing board, we have realized it on the proto, we have taken it up to the industries, industries have come up to realize the flyworthy systems with our design, tested it through our semi lacs our all qualification agencies, integrated it. We'll be very happy to know. We as a country have developed the fighter radars called Uttam. Yes. This is the active electronic scan array, which will not move by itself, but it will move with the beams. And today those systems have been integrated into the fighter aircraft, it has flown, air to air, air to ground, all the configurations, it has proven that not only it's the best system, it is the best systems in the world today. That not only India is depending on it, the entire fleet of countries are looking forward to have Uttam as a bite of it. As that, as we grow forward, it has come with various form factor, various sizes, various applications. So not only our LCS series, if you talk about Su-30, if you talk about uh, MiG-29, everywhere we are able to think replacing with Uttam. 
and as it happens, the entire radar import becomes shock. Look where we are today, just with one system. Absolutely. And it takes uh, a mindset to embrace the technology because when you develop a technology, it may be in the nascent stage and then you can deny to adopt the technology, saying that there is a better technology available in the world. But if you do not embrace the technology at that point of time, you will not be able to develop your own technology and you would always buy import. So here it is very important that mindset has changed in India over the period of time. Our forces have become so proactive in adopting and embracing the technology as the DRDO is developing. नहीं तो कहते थे कि हम जो देश एक नीडल नहीं बना सकता था आज डी आर ने ऐसा फाइटर जेट बना दिया जो दुनिया के सबसे बेहतरीन फाइटर जेट्स में से है अब जैसे आप रडार की बात कर रहे हैं विच हैज़ गिव इन सच ए ग्रेट कैपेबिलिटी आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू सर टू प्लीज टेक मी टू दो सिस्टम्स सो दैट माई व्यूअर्स माई फ्रेंड्स दे कैन अंडरस्टैंड इज बेटर वाई सींग द सिस्टम पर से सर इज इट पॉसिबल टू एक्सलेंट आइडिया एक्सलेंट आइडिया लेट्स हैव ए टेक्नोलॉजी वाक थ्रो कल वॉट आर दीज सिस्टम सर Uh, these are all uh, different kinds of radomes which we are making it in silica for Astra missile. So essentially, when we make a missile, we need to have its uh, radome so that it uh, takes care of the signals and it does not attenuate. It protects the system when it goes it on a very high speed. A series of such systems have been developed with the foam. This is some titanium alloys we have developed it for the dropping. This is for tasers. And if you come to this side. So this is coming to the pod. So this is very important thing. This is called self protection jammer pod, and uh, it contains the all electro optic suites together, and it okay. makes it to protect your fighter aircrafts against any kind of radiations. And the same I, pod is used in the LCA. Yes, yes. And if you see the very, very, very important two things I want to tell you, the two important part of a pod. This is going to the heat exchanger and the thermal management systems. All along, even though we made the pod, we were making all these as an import. And today, our country, our own scientists have developed, designed these systems for both 2 kilowatt and 3.5 kilowatt systems. Work for LCA and the Su-30. So when we have got the antennas, we have got the systems. It radiates a lot of energy. As it radiates the energy, it generates a lot of heat. So it needs to come down to the normal temperature. As well, the basic electronics will not work. So based on that, we are trying to develop all the heat heat exchanger and the thermal management systems. And this is one block we are importing all throughout. Today, through some systems, our people are able to generate, develop, and realize this product. This has been flight tested, and it has proved its worth. That no more import in this entire segment is required. I come. I will show you further. This is a very important uh, product again. Advanced self protection jammer, AS Major Pod. This is again integrating with the jammers and the RWR and all its kind of a suite. This carries underslung onto the systems, fighter aircrafts, and it is going to protect again as a self protection to its own. If there is any kind of radiation coming up, it is going to choke that. And not only that, it is also going to jam the systems wherever there are. So there is a radiation coming out. The RWR is going to detect from where the radiation is coming. It is going to slave it to the jamming systems, and jamming systems are going to choke it. So okay. this is going to be a very very. All the software is all being developed in India and by the entire, DRDO. The entire thing has been developed. Software, hardware, firmware, packaging, including the port shell. Very packaging. nice. So these are the RWR that have running receivers. This has all been developed. This is for Su-30 uh, systems. This is already a ready system. You can see. We call the name of Druti. It's an indigenous digital radar warning receiver. The entire domain is under digital platform, so that the processing becomes much more detailed. Come, I'll show you from here. This is what is uh, the triple A, triple A U A E S R, which I was telling you, the active electronic scan array radar. And this is what goes onto various platforms. And today we talk about Uttam. And when we talk about Uttam, this is the radar which is going to. It is capable, and it is going to have the features of ECCM. It is going to have the feature of all the TRMs which we are making. All the front end units, everything is being developed by our country. On the technology from LD MOS, we have gone into the gas. From the gas, we have gone into the GAN. And with all that, we are able to have the best of the technologies and the systems available for us today. And this becomes the front of the radar. It captures the signal, and as it captures the signal, it takes it down below, and we'll have the processing element who are going to process the signal and extract the targets and gives you all the relevant informations to the fighter. So this becomes the essential tool for any fighter aircraft around the world. And today, it is not only that the best system that India is taking apart. This is the system which the whole world is looking up to.
We have developed on that. So, uh, ISA is uh, also one of the systems which we are developing. Yes, this is the systems which we are developing for that. This is, of course, a quite a bit 3D low level lightweight radar, Aslesha, which we are developing. And this system has already in the scale of 1 is to 3. This has gone into and numbers of such systems has demonstrated its capability. If you look at Varani, these are also the earlier systems which are What kind are of objects uh, can it detect, sir? This can detect all kinds of flying objects. If I talk smaller about, also? Uh, smaller one also it uh, detects. Maybe we can come this side and show you something about a very interesting product again. This is called a lightweight electro optical, electro -optical payload. device. Yes, this is a lightweight electro optical payload. This is a system which all along we are importing from Israel and it is like compass. It is going below underneath an helicopter. Okay, and it starts capturing lots of data. You have got the windows, it's a sensors. This is the, like electro optics camera, yeah. this is IR camera, then there will be laser range finders, there will be sphere camera, and it has got a movements. So as it gets integrated, it will start moving in both axes, and it's just a 35 kg payload with a 350 mm diameter, and it will be able to fit into any kind of those conventional aircrafts, lightweight helicopters, and all that. So this is going to be the low weight solutions for all our airborne applications so far as electro optics is concerned. If you want to go to the domain of HD, much bigger platforms. I've got another wonderful systems here. Probably I'll be able to show it. If you come this way, this is what this is what is the bigger fellow. This is what is called cam up. This is a 55 kg and 550 millimeter with eight sensors. Probably what we have designed is one of the best in the world today. Ultra pack dense electro optic systems. So sir, these systems are to be installed only in the uh, aerial systems like helicopter, aircraft, aircraft, or they are on the ground sensors also. On the ground also. In fact, the same can operate on the ground as well. So what kind of uh, signals it picks up like? So it picks up basically the video and also the thermal contrast. It also does it with terms of the visual contrast. And there are got a laser range finder which sends the laser beam and gets back the response. From there you get the ranging also. So these are all passive devices. It does not radiate per se. So there is no radiation hazard. And second thing is as long as they are there, the explanation which I give you other side. Yep. There is a radar and if you are going to have a RWR, you will be able to detect them. This you cannot detect. So enemy would not be enemy able to detect not, No, this is a passive non-contact warfare. This is going to the asset. And how the small object can it detect moving and stationary? See, almost at about 25 to 30 kilometers range, a vehicle also it will be able to spot it up. Okay. Up to that level. And can it make a difference uh, between animal and uh, the... Yes, it can. Yes, it can. It is called the DRI, detection and then recognition and then the identification. All the three capabilities the systems have. And they put together with those kind of a, you know, uh, zooming and all kind of image processing and with AI applications, we can go much, much closer to the systems. And as you move, you are able to see your video there, you see. Okay. Here. How it is. I am here. You are seeing yourself. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. See? <laughs> That's the kind of a system it develops. Wonderful. And this is, what you are seeing, this is the thermal. Yeah. If I switch off all the lights, still yeah. you will get your images So, uh, sir is with me here, right, right here. Very nice. So, come here, this side. Very nice. So, that, is, that is where you are. <laughs> and uh, you are able to see me now, yeah. friends, but you are able to see me. You will you'll still see me when the light is off because this is works on the infrared technology and through this technology, even if it is dark, you will be able to capture your enemy. You will be able to get all the details about it. And the complete system has been developed by, by, by a lab called IRDE. Along with me, my team is there is Mr. Neeraj Varga. He has been uh, leading IRDE uh, with as ad associate director. My whole team is here. All of them put together have developed this system together. And you can see a number of such systems being displayed here. Salutes to you. Thank they are you. all the fellows. And it's because of them we are able to speak. The nation is so grateful. Thank you. Sarang, this is called a ESM systems for the helicopters. This has been developed by our lab DL, RL and Castig well, put together. And this system has come up in a very, very successful manner today. And this has gone for the testings. And this is, this is also accepted. And our production agency, Bell, along with all the set of industries, are able to develop it. I'll take you a walk through. We have a very interesting system. This okay. is called AWNC Mark II. If okay. you recollect, yesterday during inauguration, we have seen the first version, yes. the, 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 the father of this, the elder one, AWNC Mark I, which we okay. call Yatra. Yes, yes. So now that has been successful, this is flying, and today we are talking about the version 2, which is called Mark II, on which if you see, this side, there is a primary radar. Yes. And this radar captures and expand all kind of objects at a very far off range. And on the front, if you see, and that's the team, that is most important. They are my team who work for this. And if you see here, 
you are seeing a patch this is what is going to be that radar on the front end ASR radar again so this will get from the front and this will get from the back and these are the two radar systems then we have got here also there are a lot of electro optic payloads which call missile approach warning system and they have got a very wide field of view 130 degree by 104 degree and all spread around so suppose it is flying on the sky and any missile is targeting it while before it is protected in 360 degree around that it can spot the missile it and can it can, uh, uh, it can uh, detect uh, any hyper uh, supersonic missile no this subsonic subsonic missile supersonic missile much further distance will come it will have your systems to define for it but missile approach warning systems are essentially for man pad class of missiles yes. which will be very near close combat attack so this will be able to spot them then it will have something called IRST, the Infrared Search and Track System. That's going to do those long range systems. It has the capability of tracking beyond 100 kilometers. And from there, you'll be able to get the hit spot, lock it onto that, and you'll be able to get all the commands and control inside the systems. This is also going to have its software defined radio as a communication network. So it can network with others. It can network with other stations, it can transmit the data down Even the below. drones. Even the drones. Even the multiple sensors networks around. It will be able to get it up together and it will transfer back to the system. So as a result, it is a complete suite. We call it electronic suite for our fighter systems. That whether it is radar, whether it is EW system, whether it is uh, infrared search and track system, if you talk about missile approach warning system, all of them put together it will come out. But I tell you, in this journey I showed you a plethora of systems, which once was a dream for India. And today, friends, the dream has become reality, thanks to all of us. More important is thanks to our Indians who had the trust in us that we can do it, our industries who could translate to the product units, academic institutions who have given us ideas. I'd like to say something at the end. Yeah. India is roaring today. We yes. are going to put our signature in the sky that we are the best in the world. But the best does not come along only with the DRDO. Best does not come only with industries. Best comes from every countryman. Friends, every remote part of the country, every individual has got a right to dream. Because dream is our birthright. Nobody can stop us from that. Through this, I would like to send it to every single Indian in whichever corner of this country you are. Friends, think, dream, dream big. Dream big to take my country to the top and everything is possible. Today we have got the brain, we have got a heart, we have got a passion, we have got a drive, we have got industries with us, we have got academicians with us, we have got a great nation with us. It's a family who trusts us, who believes that we can deliver. And this can happen when every single individual dreams. Networking has spread everywhere. Today in the remotest rural we have got internet. I request every single child, you think of this nation. This nation waits for you. You have come forward to grow, learn, and from the childhood think how you can make our country in the best in the world. It is possible. All these things were dreamed 10 years back. Today it is reality. Our fighter is flying with our radar. If it is everything is possible, it can only happen when you think, translate your imaginations to the text, make the text to realize the model, make the model to realize proto, convert the proto to the flying model and show it to the world that we can make numbers of systems like Uttam, like EW systems, like SDRs, like electro-optic systems. But if we want to be world leader in the economy race today, we are maybe some 8th country, 7th country, 5th country, the talk is going on. We want to see one day we will be the number one country, not only on technology, but also on economy. It can happen if we develop the best of the product, which should be reliable, which should be optimal in its performance, which should be product worthy, which should have a look and a feel that we are tempted to have that system. And that is possible when all of us make a human chain to make our country the best in the world. My message to all my young children all around the country, study well. Think of country, study to make proud to the country, not by just scoring marks, by translating your marks into actions, actions into products, products into making every single Indian to be proud. Friends, when we talk about technology, technology does not exist without communications. If I am talking, you are able to receive it, it is only because there is communication. And today, the entire DRDO, the whole gambit of communication systems, May it be software-defined radio, may we talk about the long-range data link, may we talk about the SATCOM or the troposcatter communications. The entire gambit of communication systems is being designed and developed by a pioneer laboratory called Defense Electronics Applications Laboratory, Dehradun. And with me is Director Deal, who is uh, so happy to see systems. And I'll start with software-defined radio 
man pack as a system so it can make any device to connect with other devices not only that it can configure it through the software so today we don't have to have multiple systems for multiple applications it is all in one package and the entire software control is with us the way we want it to make it happen it happens and you are able to see the live hardware there are ages where india didn't have a software defined radio and we are totally looking at import made with the euro made with the israel made with the france or anywhere but today our team has able to develop the software defined radio in the man pack version this is for army applications and with the pride i can tell you system not only we have designed we have designed developed made it ready and ready in numbers there are 32 such systems who are roaring to be tested on the sky so this is the data links for the rustam uav ha small version miniaturized version pehle bada tha very nice but this is very small see what you have seen yesterday in the aerial so which has stole the show that what we are doing it in the ground it's been captured in the live feed the sky tapas. it is tapas and tapas cannot complete without this link because what we capture in electro optics it has to come down and it has to be shown to the public and this is how this data link has come up with it has proved its worth that hundreds of kilometer it is able to maintain its data reliability data purity data bandwidth and the data interpretation to that extent we have downsized further because even if you make a product in india so the earlier myth is the products becomes big in size today we have come to the micro size of the system that this electronics this is the antenna which got into the flight uh, uav and this put together has done all the gimmicks which we saw yesterday and the total you can see the trustworthy of the video you have seen the quality of the video and this kind of a system once it is deployed to protect our systems and surveillance you are able to get the reliable data for hundreds of kilometers with such a purity of the video and that is what has been established yesterday when we talk about this link and in fact you are seeing so there are some beautiful again the same software defined radio and this we called as a handheld radio you can you can hold it and uh, you can talk he is the main man behind the design of uh, sdr along with the team very nice. lc mangal and so the director of you very nice kudos so all these systems together when we talk about communications we have the single stop solutions out here and here is the team who makes it happen that entire country today thinks that we in communications are fully fully indigenous